All right. Yes, uh, that's our special guest today on the show. Uh, we're talking to Kalini. How are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. I see, I see, I see, I see you good. Well, we just saw that video to give people an introduction of the kind of vibe you do. But before we move on, I always like to ask my guests how they're doing because we know there's a pandemic, a lot of unexpected things happened, and people, you know, expectations have changed. So, how are you doing, honestly? I'm good, I'm good, just trying to stay um positive stay creative and be productive you mm. know some days are good days and other days are just like <laughs> don't want to do anything <laughs> so, so you're you're, you're yeah, practically taking it one day at a time is that what you're saying one day at a time, literally. all right all right so let's uh let's get right into the gist of the day we're talking about your music now uh let's start from uh, how it all started for you before we get into the actual process. So how long have you been doing this and why did you even decide to do music in the first place? Um, I've been doing it for as long as I can remember. Um, hmm. my, my, I come from a very musical family, so music was always like in our home. And I would perform in musicals and theater shows for a I started learning how to play the piano when I was five. Okay. So like it was just like a natural progression, I guess. And, and I did. Um, I went to university um, to study business management, and then after that, went to music school properly to um, get a proper degree in film music um, mm -hmm. composition. So I guess it's just always been. I've, I've always been in music. You know, when people always ask me, like, you know, what would you do if you went to music? I can't even answer that question because it's been a part of my life for so long. <laughs> so it's like music is part of you and you're part of music. Is that what you say so? Yeah. Okay, so since uh, you had to, you know, uh, go through the process to, you know, understand music, and you said you learned how to play a piano. Was that because you had interest in music or you just felt that you needed to learn a musical instrument? to just back up your love for music? Um, good question. I started playing the piano like I was classically trained and then when I decided to put singing into the mix, mm -hmm. um, again, it was like almost like a natural progression to try and figure out how I can incorporate um, piano. I don't know if I'm answering your question. Yeah, but, yes, yes, yes. Um, I, it was... It was <laughs> It was quite. It was much later on, you know, in my life, like probably um, past my teens, that I realized. Actually, in music school, I realized that I could um, put the piano and voice together. So, more of like a Alicia Keys type act yeah. or a Stevie Wonder, where you're always playing singing. So. Oh, nice. So at least you, you already knew the kind of sound you wanted to bring out in your music. Now, speaking about your kind of sound, it's quite different from what uh, the regular Nigerian kind of vibe it used to. I used to the bad to bad to bad club music, ja, yeah, shaku shaku, up and down, all those kind of mix. So, but your sound is quite different. So tell us about your style of music and what is your sound, if, they, if you can answer that real quick. Yeah, it's it's become more and more difficult to like put myself in a particular category of genre, but I would say that it, my music is soulful. I would say that there are elements of R and B, there are elements of um, even high life and Afro, a little bit of Afrobeat as well. Um, and right now I'm working on like it's, it's still Kaline, but it's like a different kind of sound mm -hmm. um, that. I'm trying to just explore right now, trying to create something new. So it's a fusion. It's a fusion. Let's just call it Afro Soul Fusion. Afro <laughs> Soul genre. Fusion. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So 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 far, how has the reception been? Looking at the fact that you're creating something new, how's the reception been so far from your fans and people who have listened to your kind of music? Well, I just released a song yesterday, um, and it's uh, it's a mixture of R and B and hip hop because I have I'm featuring Laddie Po on the song. Okay. It's called Quarantine, and so I had like a little listening session last, and the the reception was insane. People are like, we never knew that Kaline could sound like this, and it's just it's refreshing and encouraging to know that okay, I'm on the right track. Mm. So yeah, the reception has been good. 
for sure. Good. And seeing the fact that you featured Ladi Po on that one, um, what does it take uh, to for you to select who you feature on your songs? Is it uh, they have to, you, you must connect with your vibe, or if you just say, okay, I need a rapper on this, you now draw up a list of rappers. I mean, like, okay, this person, that person. But how does it work for you when you select uh, someone to do a feature on your song? How do you work that out? Well, okay, so for me, you know, I'm still, I'm not, I'm not quite, you know, in the like higher tier of artists. You are still sort of like, I'm not up and coming, but yeah, in the middle there. Yeah. So I, I have access to a limited number, I should say, of artists. So mm -hmm. um, the first thing I do is think, okay, who do I know that I can ask to be on this song? Mm -hmm. And who will fit it? So yeah, it's a bit like how you said, like, so you write like a list mm -hmm. and then you now you, you listen to the song and you think okay who would actually rock with this vibe um based on the music that they do based on just their own you know vibe with their own genre and yeah so ladipo and i have known each other for a very long time and the minute i um and we always sort of exchange music once in a while so okay. i actually just sent him the song okay. to see what he thought not even to have him be on it and he was just like oh my god i love it like do you have anyone doing anything on this like um i'll be willing to jump on and that's how it happens so and i feel like his vibe really really fits um you know the song so well um mm. it's called quarantine and it's just about appreciating your significant other during the quarantine the lockdown. lockdown time yeah. so it's like a duet, you know, male female sorts of situation so it really worked really well Interesting. Now, I was, I was uh, speak, still speaking about features. Um, there's uh, an, a narrative out there that women don't like to feature each other on songs. And uh, you're a female artist. And uh, this is because looking at the amount of women who feature men to the amount of women who feature women, the ratio is quite, you know, totally different, far away, far apart. So what do you have to say about this? Is it that now the argument is women are scared of the next woman to take her shine on her song. It's just a conversation that's been going on, but I'd like to hear from you. You're a female artist, you're in the industry. What do you think about that? Okay, I didn't, it cut off a little, so I didn't hear what you said the argument was, but I actually think, um, I don't think that it's true that women don't support women or where there's that whole perception as well. But, um, it's who you have access to. It's who you feel could fit the song. For me, it's never about, okay, I'm going, just because of what people are saying, I'm going to write a song for a woman to feature on it. Not necessarily. Like, you know, you start, it's the art first for me. It's like the creativity first. If something comes out of it that would, it could involve a woman. You know, it's rare that you would find a situation where, um, I, I think one of the biggest topics in music is love. Yeah. or relationships love and relationships. so yes. you already you already like pigeonhole <laughs> limited yourself for it to be male or female mm -hmm. you know pretty much stereotypically unless you have like a monica and brandy type situation where two of you are fighting over, over a guy, a guy or yeah things like that so <laughs> i think it, i think it's yeah. situations i think it's scenarios um but we, we definitely cannot say that there haven't been you know women um collaborations that have been epic you know from Yemi Alade and Anjali Kijo to YJ and Tiwa Savage. Mm -hmm. There's so many. Um, and I'm about to do, um, should I give you this scoop? I'm about to do a duet with, I'm about to do a duet with a female, well-known female artist. I can't say who yet, because we have, we just decided on, like, we're doing a song together. Okay. So I can't say who yet, okay. but yeah, it's coming. And I think more and more women will, will be doing more and more songs, like, um, that will involve each other. The, yeah. the, the, the argument I spoke of that you said you probably didn't hear was the fact that they say women are scared of uh, the next woman taking their shine on the song. Now, this, this has also been a case for rappers sometimes. If a rapper wants to do a, a, a track and he wants to pick another rapper to be on the track, He's also concerned that this guy might speak more bars better than mine and people might like his verse better than my verse. So that is also on the rap side. They can also say that as a narrative in the rap industry. So they say this for the female uh, artist to saying that, okay, maybe he, she might take my shine on my song. So that was it, the argument I said that do you think this is even any, in any way true or can there be any you know, atom of truth in that conversation? I think that people 
there were there are different kinds of people in the world. You know, there are people who feel that they're only competing against themselves, mm. which is like me. Like I don't think that there can be anybody who I would feel threatened, you know, for for that reason, threatened to have them collaborate with me because yeah. I'm worried that they might steal my time. Because I just feel like my own lane is my own lane and theirs is theirs. And um, it's even a privilege to sort of meet halfway and do something together. But of course, there are people who are a bit insecure about, you know, um, trying to maintain a certain level in their career or stage, and they don't want anyone. I don't know. I don't. Know. I just feel like that's probably from a place of anxiety and insecurity, which you know I'm constantly trying to preach against. So everybody's art is their art, and you should just be, you should be your own competitor. I like that. I like the fact that, like you said, you're competing against yourself. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be scared of the next person's success because it wouldn't actually affect yours if you're focused on what you're doing. Now, uh, before we wrap this up, I'd like to know, um, for you, how long, the, uh, how do you, what, where do you get your inspiration from when you write your songs? Are they always personal experiences? Are they from people? Do you just, um, you know, make them out of fiction? But how do you um, get your inspiration when you write? the above everything you said a b c all of the above are you saying <laughs> um, that's nice <laughs> yes. my own stories for i steal stories from my friends all the time like that's how i like my first few songs that i ever started writing i guess maybe i was too scared to talk about my own experiences so like i would just with my friends and have conversations and i'll just be like oh that would be nice for a song topic mm -hmm. um and then there's fiction um, but of course, there's also social change. Like I've written songs. Um, I wrote a song called "Bring Them Home" for the Chibok Girls, um, okay. creating awareness for the abduction in 2014. And um, so that's like obviously based on truth and facts. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so it's just d different different scenarios. Um, but now more and more, I want to just start talking more about my own truths and telling my own stories, my own experiences, because mm -hmm. um, I feel more confident. About them i feel like there are so many things that i go through that i look for like the lessons in them and i like that idea of putting them into song so that people can learn from maybe my mistakes or learn from my experiences in, in a way so yeah Hmm. I like that. I like the fact that uh, you also um, are very true to your to your work and to your art, knowing that hey, the best way to express it is if it comes from inside. Now, for uh, for young upcoming artists, female artists uh, who are going through a lot of difficulties, because uh, yeah, I had a conversation with a female artist uh, some time back, and she was telling us how uh, it's quite difficult to break through in the industry because of some certain uh, things that happen just that are, that are particular to female artists. Now, for young uh, upcoming female artists, uh, for people who are out there who want to do this music, uh, what are those words that you can give to them? Seeing the fact that you've been in this space and you're, you're actually uh, you know, thriving so far. So what are those few words you can tell them and how they can work around it? I would say, um, I will be very honest, like you, the road is long and it's hard. Some people get to where they want to go quicker. Some people, they, it just takes a little bit longer and it just takes patience. Um, I think the one thing that will make you stay your course is to remember that your art is not for you it's for other people hmm. that's the one thing that encourages me uh, when i when i look at you know my vision for my career and for my life i know that there's something about the fact that i have these skills or talents or these gifts um and using it to affect change in, in other people and in the world so that's my number one way to say because it is tough, it is hard, and you know, male, female, whatever. There's so many upcoming artists. I speak to them every single day. Like they, they make up about eighty or ninety percent of my followership. Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of struggle, but you just have to take one step at a time, one day at a time. Don't compare yourself to other people. Your own journey is different, and mm. yes, as long as you realize that the road is going to just be tough sometimes, learn from those experiences and use those experiences to tell your story even more. It's all about sharing our stories and finding a connection between each other in the I world. I like that. I believe they've gotten all that information. And it was quite a very good advice you give them. That's really nice. Uh, so before you wrap up with us here, uh, Kaline, we'd like to know, what should we expect from Kaline? Asides, Kaline featuring Ladipo. What else should we expect yeah. anytime soon, besides that one? Or if that's what we expect, uh, let us know. 
Um, yes, that is what to expect. So it's called Quarantine, um, and it will be out on all platforms on Monday. And then I also expect the full album before the end of the year, working okay. tirelessly okay. together, all recorded. So I'm excited about this sort of new, new Kaline, a little bit of a rebrand. Um, okay. And yeah, I'm working on, I'm working on a couple of virtual concerts as well before the end of the year, just to, like get right to make sure that it's a really nice experience virtually mm. for everybody. Mm. Nice. Um, yeah. And then the collaboration that I mentioned with the, the major female artist yes, yes. will be before the end of the year as well. So a lot of music and a lot of experiences to come. All right. Thank you very much, <laughs> Kaleen. Nay, hey, but before you leave us there, can you just give us a, a little bit of, you know, vibe? Give us some, a line or two out of some of your, you know, your, your hit songs. Just let people just feel you live. Can you do that for me? Really? Really? Yes. Well, putting me on the spot at 9.30 in the morning. I don't know if my voice is working, but... <laughs> okay. Um, um, let me give you... Money, Latin. Amazing, amazing. Well, that was an amazing. Well, you said that uh, I put you on the spot, but trust me, at 9:30 a.m. in the morning, and you sound like that. Come on, come on, come on. All right. Thank you very much for the conversation, uh, Kaline, and we'll be looking forward to your projects as they come out. And uh, for people who want to follow you on social media, can you just drop uh, your social media handle for them real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, Instagram is at Kaline Official, um, and you can find like everything there with like my, my website and where you can find my music. Twitter is Kaline A, Facebook Kaline Official. Okay. Yeah. So, All right. Mm -hmm. All thank right. you very much for having right. me, and thank you for your support. You, you guys always support me. Thank you. No problem. We're always here to do that. <laughs> thank you very much for talking to us. <laughs> Have a lovely day, Kaline. To enjoy more of these our Ubunke videos, when you just watch. Press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.